Hey, everybody. Hi, everyone. Welcome to an old, a new old segment. New old segment. A new old one. This is basically Mario Kart Mondays, except the game is now Different on rotation. Games. Yep. Yeah, since Mario Kart was starting to get a little stale, boring. But we liked we liked the uh, yeah. if you if you've never watched Mario Kart Monday, basically what we like to do it's sort of like a podcast where we basically just have a game on that we're playing, but we really only have pay attention and we're mo mainly discussing things, shooting the shit. Yep, talking about the issues, talking, talking about, about the important facts that grip gamers everywhere. The hot topics. Like the yeah, like hot topic exactly. Yeah. Um, that's our that's our topic today. No, just kidding. I yeah, maybe a, <laughs> maybe on the maybe future. Maybe someday. Um, this is we're playing Animal Crossing. It's a pretty you pretty know chill. Ch chill game. So not a lot of consequences if like we don't if we mess up and we don't. <laughs> it's hard to mess up in this <laughs> game, I guess. It moves in real. All the villagers are dead. <laughs> It moves in real time, which is wild. Um, actually, that brings up a good question that I didn't think about. The mm -hmm. like, oh, if we come back to this in like months. Yeah. <laughs> if we come back to it, and they're like, "Where the fuck were you?" Um. Well, maybe that'll be funny. Yeah, get some friends to come here. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's true. If we switch out, I could like do a different file. Yeah, that's true. But it's it's whatever. Well, before we get the show on the road, I guess we do have to like name our guy, mm. and we only got one suggestion, and I wasn't I wasn't thrilled with it. Mm -hmm. Um, where this creep is gonna talk to us? He's he needs help. He's never been on a train before. How did you know that? Uh. What? This, oh, this is your first experience with the Animal Crossing franchise, isn't it? Um, sort sort of. I played Pocket Camp. Okay, so this is your first but experience yes. with the Animal Crossing franchise. An actual Animal Crossing game, yes. Yeah. Um, well, this is Rover. He's in the beginning of every Animal Crossing game, and he asks you important questions, like what mm. your name is. He's Professor Oak. Uh, yeah, exactly. He's basically Professor Oak. Look at this sick keyboard. Yeah. I wish <laughs> I had a keyboard like this. Um, okay, uh, what listen, are gonna, listen, what are we listen. Gonna name our guy? Can we compromise? Hmm. Can we at least name him Dad Pit? I feel like this is, I feel okay. like meeting each other halfway here. I, I want to call him daddy. Brad, Brad Pitt wasn't my suggestion. Oh, well, what's your suggestion then? I didn't really have one. Okay. Just not daddy. Right. Well, so I feel like I'm being, I, I don't understand why I come up with a name and it's immediately shot down. You don't even have a counter suggestion. But we can, I mean, if you want to name after some other celebrity. Mm. Or maybe we should make their name a ship name. <laughs> What's a very bad ship that you you don't support? Uh, C. Dewey is here. Hi, C. Dewey. Yes, if we need more suggestions. Sure. Maybe, I think Dad Pitt could be a ship name if it's just Brad <laughs> Pitt with somebody's dad. Mm. HMS Titanic. I don't know if that'll fit. Bad ship. Oh, nice one. I get it. <laughs> Good joke. Uh, yeah, we get it, CDW. Good one. Or like you could name it the Lusitania. Another bad ship. Hmm. Or the or the main. I several ship. I know about several shipwrecks, Chelsea, because I'm normal. <laughs> um. Ooh, that's a good title for this episode, Shipwrecks. Mm, that is. Yeah. Let's just name him Tom Nook. Just fuck it. <laughs> or, Dead Nook. or Isabella. Or whatever. Since Isabella isn't in this game. Name him... Name him... Do Dozer. Name him Dozer? Crombo. Name, I'm just... I'm really grasping at straws here. Name him C. Dewey. 
<laughs> Mayor Dewey. Yeah, Mayor Dewey. Oh, Are that you the only, mayor in this if, one? No, no, if only we were playing the one where you were the mayor, oh, then that'd be like good as fuck. Then we could do it. We could be Mayor Dewey. Starscream after the Transformer. Well, okay, you're just naming Transformers. <laughs> Name him O Prime. O Prime? Yeah, after Optimus Prime. And it's also like Oprah. Oh yeah, name him Oprah. Or her. I'd, I don't know what gender your guy is yet. I'm gonna name him Oprah. All right, that's good, that'll work. What is S? What? Is S okay? Yeah, start button. Oh, okay. Hey, wow, don't say dude. that. That's messed up, come on. Worth billions of dollars. It's a cool name. So cool. Uh, are we a boy or not a boy? Hey, whatever the fuck you want, dude. You're gonna have devil horns either way. Mm. I guess it's kind of funny if you're a boy named Oprah. I get. Yeah, that is funny. That's classic. <laughs> yeah. A boy named Oprah. Oh, where are we going? I didn't know we got to name Oh, the that's place. right, we got to name the town. I forgot. I don't know, when I was playing this game and I was cool and 11, I would always name the town like hell. <laughs> um, but if you're Oprah, then just name the town a, new, a new car. <laughs> <laughs> A nuker. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You're going to a new car! <laughs> uh, What's it do ya, yeah. blue cat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in Dere. <laughs> Leave me alone! Don't He's laugh. laughing at such don't, an asshole! Don't laugh at being homeless, man! Oh, dude, I don't have a home. Look, okay, I'm a millennial. I'm allowed <laughs> to do this. See, this is this game is why millennials are the way they are. Yeah. They're just all waiting for their blue cats to, like, show up in a train and hook them up with a loan shark. Thanks, Nintendo. Thanks, Tendo. Oh, man. What's up? He's calling the mob or something. I mean, basically, he's calling a loan shark, dude. He's he calling cat was trouble. the fucking video game history's most famous loan shark, <laughs> Tom Nook. <laughs> I, Oprah, cannot afford my own home, so I have to go I to a large away, shark. I gave away too many cars. Yeah. It's lazy as heck, see, Dewey. Come on. How do you usually watch it? And well, probably while like doing push-ups. Yeah. I assume. Playing soccer. That's what I always imagine when I imagine C. Dewey watching our stream. It's mm -hmm. him like doing that soccer thing with the bouncing it up on down on your knee. Yeah. Just constantly doing that. Right. Doing like a training montage. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. So, when when should we get down to brass tacks? 
and talk about talk about this. Wait, what does your guy look like? Oh, he's got uh, the weird like looking to the side eyes. Mm -hmm. And he's got like big old blushy cheeks, damn. Yeah. yeah, dude. And I never understood why your fucking guy has horns in this one. Hmm. Someone thought it was cool. And someone thought it was awesome. <laughs> Such a jerk. Who's laughing at me? Yeah, everyone's laughing at you in this game. This game is so embarrassing. Let's scuttle. All right, you're about to get to choose between four stunning homes, Chelsea, <laughs> so get ready. Oh boy. <laughs> this doesn't seem very safe. Eh, it's a great neighborhood, wonderful schools. This is a closet. No, come on. You can't interact with this. Well, it's not yours, dude. <laughs> okay, so we have that house. Yeah, that's true. In real life, you can only pick things up if they're yours. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I guess. So are they all the same? Well, um... Not completely. There are subtle differences, I'd say. For example, this one, he has more of a shed vibe. Mm. And he's going to be like, do you like this shed? No, you don't like this ugly shed? <laughs> and he's like getting Shakespearean about it like, alas. Man, a new car must be like in the Bay Area or something. Yeah, dude. This is actually, these are all replicas of C. Dewey's apartment. <laughs> this one is linoleum, oh. and like, I don't even know what the fuck that wow. material is supposed to be. It's a can of gas. Dewey's apartment is slightly bigger. <laughs> Not by much. And then you have wooden mm. walls and like this metal ground. Now when I first played this game as a we taught, I picked the stone the stone floor brick walls because mm -hmm. I felt like that place seemed the most like a place where people live. Yeah. Like all this other shit is like, oh cool scrap metal house. Great. Yeah. I guess I'll take this one. I'll take it. Beautiful. Wow. Look, see? You're a millennial and a homeowner. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Now all you have to do is find the avocado toast item and you'll have it all. You win the game. This house has no bathroom <laughs> or kitchen. Doesn't really have room for a bed. No room for a bed. Um, but hey, it'll keep you out of the rain. Yeah, it'll keep you warm at night. Well, sort of. Pop into the neighbor's houses and steal their shit. Yeah, just take it.
Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Give. Here. Wow. <laughs> You're so poor. <laughs> poor. I might be poor now, but Oprah's origin story. It's hum well. it's humbling. <laughs> Her new life in the new car. <laughs> It'll bring tears to your eyes. Okay, bye. Well, all right then. This game is slightly traumatic for someone who lives in the Bay, Bay Area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's talk. Let's talk yeah. about the thing. Talk about the thing. So, Chelsea, I feel like you you sort of suggested this topic, so mm -hmm. maybe you could explain it to myself as well as the viewers. Sure. Okay. So. In fandom culture, a big thing is what's known as shipping. And if you are never in the internet... Hi, Greta. Hello, Greta. If you're never a part of a fandom on the internet, shipping is when you take two or more fictional characters and you like to... Uh, or less. Or less. And you like to imagine them in a romantic relationship. Um... So, the thing I was thinking about talking about was, there's this thing that's sort of become more prevalent recently. Like, there's always been ship wars. Mm -hmm. Which is where people who like different ships will be like, my ship is better, no, my ship is better. And ship wars usually it's dumb. include, like, you know, one character in the same, like, an example yeah. of a ship war would be, like, like and Katara uh, and Katara Zuko versus, Katara. Yep. Um... So those have like kind of always been a thing. But one thing that's, at least in my observation, has been a little more prevalent recently is people who... It's not, it's not so much a ship war, like, my ship is better than yours, although that is sometimes part of it, as it is s someone saying, like, hey, you shouldn't ship this because it's problematic. Mm. And I guess I thought it might be interesting to talk about sort of the moral implications, I suppose. Like, should you be able to, or is it is it kosher to, I guess, say a ship is bad? Okay, okay. Um, like, personally, I, I always stay out of that sort of thing. If whenever I see that drama, I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't interact. Right. Um, but, you know, this is our show, and... I don't right. think any of those people are going to be watching, so. Yeah. And I'm not obviously going li to name any names. <laughs> not going to name any names, but if you're out there and you are part of this example, we're coming for you. Yeah. So give me an example of a problematic ship. Uh, okay, so there are different reasons, but one is like incest. Okay. People well. People are like, hey, incest is bad. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't ship it. And then, you know, the the argument is like well for pretty much all of these is like it's fictional sure it's not hurting anyone right i wouldn't condone it in real life right a good and argument like, and it's like is does that make it okay that it's fictional yes but it is gross I is is my take. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm not gonna tell you you can't ship something. I'm not gonna say you're um you're uh Azula uh Zuko ship is illegal, but I will say it's gross and you're weird. Mm. Cause why would you want that? Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. You know, trying to understand like the weird trappings of like people's inner like psyches is impossible mm -hmm. it's like trying to understand why anyone would want to ship a brother and a sister you gotta get a shovel my man oh. 
Where do I where do I get items? I feel At like I Tom Nook's things. store. Where is that? It should be in like the top right uh, square. Okay. Um, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's what this game yeah. is for. Um, I mean, I can't possibly understand why you would necessarily want it ever shipped. That's that's the problem, I guess. Lack of imagination. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to ship family members? Mm -hmm. Do you have any incestuous ships, Chelsea? No. Well, okay. Well, so, I mean, I don't know. For lack of, a, you know, it's just a lack of understanding. I don't get it. Oh, yeah. maybe it's not there. I don't know. It's around somewhere. You'll find it. Um, I mean, I guess the argument that I've usually seen of people who condemn this sort of thing is um, people are saying, like, and I mean, it's, it's sort of that line of, like, yeah, thing is fictional and not in real life, but it it means your beliefs. Like, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm saying this well. I guess another example other than incest that I've seen a lot there is... There it is. Oh, this is it? Yep. Is, um, like, shipping Wait, characters... No, that's the post office. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Shipping characters who, like, one of them is underage or way younger mm -hmm. people a lot of times find that problematic sure um and you know it's you have the argument of oh well they're, they're not real uh-huh but i guess people argue like well but there even when a thing just because like a story is fictional it can still influence people or like, just because you have child porn, even if you like, if you own child porn, you might be like, oh, but I'm not gonna actually, you know, do anything in real life. Well, I but just have child. I just l like looking, like, not real child porn, but like, more like, like hentai or something. You okay. Know? Like not this actual. <laughs> This but first like, step, this inaugural episode <laughs> has already gotten to like a very uncomfortable place. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's sort of along those lines of I guess if you if you own like hentai or something that is of a character that like looks young, mm -hmm. and you're and you say, oh well, I would. I wouldn't do anything like that in real life. I think it's bad in real life. But it's like, well, it's... Should, do you still condemn them? You are condemned. Or, you know, you know what I you mean, You have though. been condemned, sir. Um... I mean, like, I don't know, like, this idea of, like, condemnation is kind of an abstract concept. Mm -hmm. I called? mean... It's like, it's, I guess it's like one thing to think like somebody's fetish is nasty. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, dude, like underage characters, like, oh, is that? There's no oh, there store. Underage characters are like nasty. It's yeah. gnarly. Or like uh -huh. um, incest is like gnarly. Yeah. I, I find that all like just, you know, repellent yeah. because of... Well, I don't know, now I have to interrogate my own beliefs and I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. But regardless, it's one thing to find something like gross, but I don't know, man. It's like, if you're not doing horrific things, then like, I'm not gonna t tell you you're bad. Mm -hmm. I guess I wouldn't like, I guess I wouldn't condemn them. I wouldn't go in so far as to say you're a bad person. Yeah. But I would be like, you're not necessarily a bad person, but your fetish weirds me out big time, dog. Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to be doing? I don't know. You, I don't know. Did you ask Tom Nook? I think you he need to introduce yourself to all of, he gave you an outfit. Yeah. And then what did he say? I don't know, I was listening to what you were saying. <laughs> okay. I mean, I think you're supposed to be doing odd jobs for Tom Nook or something. Mm. So I guess that's where I would be at with it. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, again, it's like... Yeah, like, and I agree. I I also, like, I'm very also non-confrontational. So mm -hmm. even if someone does have, like, a fetish or a ship that I think is gross, I'm not going to tell them. Yeah. But... I, I, I might, you know, kind of, like, not want to necessarily interact with them. Cluckling. Now that is <laughs> my, that is a gross fetish. Get a part-time job. You had five burglars? Not burgers, but <laughs> burglars? Was it five guys? Burglars and fries? Oh, she's talking about The Sims. Oh, okay. I thought you meant IRL. Yeah. Um. Just this. put it on you, and then you'll have it equipped. Maybe I'm supposed to go back to the shop when wearing this uniform? Yeah, prob probably. But I don't know. I just think... I thought it was kind of like an interesting and not necessarily good direction that a lot of fandoms have been going lately. And I wanted to sort of get your take because I know you're not really into shipping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Because I see a lot of discourse about it, like people being like, oh, just let people ship whatever they want, and other people being like, no, it, this is, like, morally reprehensible, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The other thing is that, like, people, uh, from what I understand, like, I guess some people do actually make money off of fan fiction, but, like, most people don't right it's like a for funsies deal yeah yeah you like write fan fiction you put it on like ao3 for like people to read but it's not like you're taking donations usually right. so it's like i don't know it's not like you're can making I, can i drop my stuff in a way that i still have it is there like a place i can take it or do i just you have can to like drop it, it in your house i think and it'll stay there not that i have a whole lot i think i just made yeah. a fruit you have like a bunch of oranges and you probably don't need that many oranges mm. Um, but like, I don't know, I guess if at some point, maybe like, if you're writing, uh, fanfics about like, like kind of, uh, taboo topics and like you're getting paid for it somehow, then maybe it's like morally reprehensible. Like, like a good example would be, um, Fifty Shades of Grey, mm -hmm. which is essentially a fanfic. Yeah. And it's like, you know, BDSM isn't in and of itself reprehensible, but rather, since it's like kind of about really an abusive relationship, yeah, then it is kind of reprehensible because like now a lot of people are paying money to support somebody who espouses A, this like mm -hmm. kind of shitty rhetoric. Yeah. And B, people get like the wrong ideas about relationships. I think yeah. that's when I it starts just, to become a real gray area. Yeah. Fifty shades of gray area. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that is sort of an example of what people are talking about when they talk about this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, yeah, it's fictional, but it is also an abusive relationship that people are romanticizing. And that's actually a really good example of what I was trying to, t uh, what I was trying to talk about because it's sort of the same situation where maybe it's true people aren't paying for it, but a lot of people are reading it and might be like, oh yeah, this, this is fine in real life, even though, you know. Even though it's not fine. Yeah. I mean, I guess so, but there's like a, so many ways people can like just get bad ideas. Mm-hmm. I wasn't paying attention again. What am I doing? I don't know, you're planting flowers.
Did he give you the stuff you need? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Um. Ugh, big ol' hot take from Greta. Well, it's not necessarily that like you're paying to support abusive relationships. It's more that you're giving somebody a platform to espouse bad relationships. I mean, it's, you know, it kind of comes down to like this idea of like, can people like sort of separate their fantasies from like real life and real people? And it's like, you want to believe that they can, you know, people can make like, smart choices, but feel so often that they can't do it good, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree with you. I think most, like, reasonably healthy and people can, like, you know, sort of separate their kinks from what is actually real, like, relationship and real, like, ways to interact with people. And like I said, I, like, still feel pretty certain that, like, you shouldn't necessarily, like, condemn these people. Mm -hmm. I, I would be on the camp of, like, just let them write it, whatever. Yeah. You're not gonna get people to stop. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, that's also... Again, I'm more playing devil's advocate and just mm -hmm. explaining things because I also don't interact with this type of issue usually. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I just lost my train of thought now. Um, but yeah, generally I also... I don't know. There's, there's also like the thing of um like a lot of a lot of these types of shifts that people talk about are where characters are younger mm -hmm. and i feel like in that case i do agree that like like personally i wouldn't want to ship a character that's like ambiguously anime 14 mm -hmm. with like a character that is obviously an adult. Right. But I am even more reluctant to just jump on a person who does, mm -hmm. especially on the internet, because I don't know how old that person is. Yeah. Because, like, w when you're younger, you don't see that as much of a problem, mm -hmm. which is kind of the issue itself. Mm -hmm. It's that when you're the younger character, like, in real life, uh, you, you don't have as much... Um, Let's call it wisdom. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you're younger, in, in a, lot of, a lot of people use shipping as sort of in place of a self-insert, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you see the main character as your the character you're projecting on, mm -hmm. which a lot of people do because the main character usually is the character you're supposed to relate to. Sure. And then you, as like a 15 year old, have a crush on a character that's like the, an older character. So because of that, you ship those two characters together. That's, that's like fucking so normal. Yeah, it's like not a big deal. It's like if I went to a middle school girl who has a crush on Chris Hemsworth, yeah. And it's like, hey, that guy is hey, like you don't you you better <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. And like because the internet is so anonymous, right. You don't know. Like if I see fan art of a, of that type of situation, I'm not going to be like, hey, this adult should not be shipping these two characters cuz it might just be a teenager or something. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to you know, again, tell that person like hey don't do that yeah dude 
when I was like, like in high school, I definitely like made a lot of ships of like, uh, um, like uh, Shinjiro and um, Danny DeVito. And, like, <laughs> people were like, why? Is, that's weird, dude. Yeah. That's pedophilia. I'm like, what's wrong with it? <laughs> they were just so beautiful together. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's totally... Yeah, like, I, I, even when I was younger, I had some ships like that, too, because it mm -hmm. was sort of a similar situation. It wasn't, in my case, it wasn't so much that it was a self-insert as it was like, oh, well, you know, I'm this age. Yeah, I'm fucking, I can handle myself. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an intelligent 14-year-old. Yeah, and then, uh, and then as I got older, that I, I, like, would see a similar sort of ship and be like, oh. That's, yeah. I don't, I'm not into that. Right, well, when you're like a kid, you're like a kid, and like everything seems like kinda okay. Yeah. And then you become an adult, and then you see the, you know, then you experience the true darkness of adulthood, and you're like, oh no. No, no child should ever like an adult. <laughs> Um, oh, you're supposed to say grandpa. Yeah. Uh, what are your guys' hot takes? I know some of you have been sort of weighed in. Hot taking all over the place. Well, I mean, shipping is not all just about self-insert, like, it's never been that way for me. Um, I just like two characters and think they're cute together, but I don't consider one of the characters to be my proxy. Yeah. How do you feel about, um, characters that, like, look young, but, like, are vampires and shit? I think we talked about this in a Mario Kart. Oh, did we? Um, but I don't mind talking about it again. Yeah, go for it. Um, I mean, that's it's an interesting sort of situation because I feel like there's, at least for me, a little bit of a double standard because it's like, if the character physically looks young, even if they're like 100 years old, mm -hmm. it still feels kind of gross. Sure. But, like, uh, but then if, if they, like, suddenly have some sort of magical transformation and look older, like they're supposed to be, well, not, like, a hundred, but, like, an adult. Right. Then it's okay. What, what do you, what is your... I don't know, it strikes me as like weird and like kind of an obvious dodge. Yeah. Like, the whenever I think of this trope, I always think of, uh, do you know the game Disgaea? Mm -mm. There's like this extremely J, JRPG called the Disgaea. And like one of the main characters is this, this succubus named Etna, mm -hmm. I think is her name. And she's like, obviously like, she looks like she's fucking 13, mm. but then like through like dialogue, she's like, I'm a thousand year old demon. Mm. And so like, I think a lot of people on the internet, you know, realize this obvious sort of transparency because it's kind of like a hilarious joke mm -hmm. in, inside the community of like people who do Etna shipping. Mm. Where it's like, it's okay, she's a thousand years old. Yeah. But like, she's obvious, she's very obviously not. And it's like, I don't know, for all intents and purposes, to me, I feel like, come on, dude. This, you just wanna ship a 13 year old. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, I always think of Dance in the Vampire Bund, which is like this manga that I read a little bit of, and it's sort of a similar situation of, like, the main characters... Like, I didn't get far enough to find out if she's actually his love interest, but it kind of hints at it. But she's like this vampire who's hundreds of years old, mm -hmm. but she looks like she's 13 or something. Yeah. And like, sometimes she'll have a magical transformation that turns her into an adult, but most of the time, she's 13. Gotcha. And it's like, weird. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I agree with UC Dewey. It's harmless, like, for the most part. And again, not on the not on the side of like condemning anyone. Not on yeah. the side of trying to say anyone's a bad person. Yeah, I guess in the in the case of like the vampire one, I kind of it, if you're gonna condemn anyone, I guess it would be the author because he like in it's sort of that you know he intentionally made this character look younger and put her in like sexy clothes and stuff, and then it's like oh, but she's hundreds of years old. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of gross, still. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, authors, like, don't actually do anything meaningful with that trope. This is, like, yeah. obviously some sort of... It's an excuse for yeah. your weird fetish. It's, it's an excuse to <laughs> perv out yeah. on, like, a little girl. Yeah. I guess, like, maybe, like, my middle ground here is that I won't condemn you, but I will kink shame you about it. I was wondering about this actually now since we like talked about uh oh can't oh, hold no. any more oranges. Um, aside from like very taboo things like incest and pedophilia, like are there any other like kind of ships that are thought of as like problematic? Um, I mean, I feel like those are the two main ones I usually see. Do people like ever get bent out of shape when like a character is shipped like outside of their sort of canon sexuality? Uh, generally no, at least in my experience. I feel like there might be a little bit of a bias because like most of, like 99% of the time when that happens, it's when you take a straight character mm -hmm. and make them gay or bi or et cetera. Yeah. Um, and of course, there are some people who are up on arms about it. Well, sure. But you, I feel like you rarely see characters who are gay and canon put in a straight relationship. But if they did, I imagine there would be people who were upset. Who like who put a gay character in a straight relationship? Yeah. Like they'd be like uh, upset about like Erisir. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I was, like, wondering, yeah, like, if it like, went either way. Yeah, and, you know, it is... You you could argue that it's a bit of a double standard, but it's the same as, like, whitewashing versus making a, a previously white character into a minority. Mm -hmm. It's like, technically, sure, it's... A, you you did the same thing, but no, no you didn't. Right. <laughs> what is What am I doing? Hey, what's up? I don't know, because I keep not paying attention yeah. to what the fuck Tom Nook wants us to do. We picked this game because I thought we would, I would just be running around doing random shit, but apparently I have to actually do certain yeah, things. Yeah, I forgot that Tom Nook like, <laughs> makes you do all this bullshit at the beginning. I don't know about that. I feel like that's common, right? Like, pairing a victim and an attacker. Like, that's, that's like such a thing. Mm, yeah. Like, again, I guess you could get all bent out of shape because it's, like, you know, yeah. I guess abusive, but... Yeah, I mean, I was actually going to bring up uh, earlier, like, one of the sort of problematic shifts that I like... 
Uh oh. Is. No. Well, you sure you want yeah. to go on record with this? <laughs> uh. It's Will and Hannibal. In Hannibal. Um, and it's Chelsea. like. Chelsea. Yeah. And it's like in real life. It, it'd be like call the police. The sex police. Yeah. Oh. But. And it's like should. Should I be, you know, condemned for liking that sort of shit? You you consider yourself condemned, Chelsea. <laughs> oh no. Shit. Um I mean nah. Probably not. Which is like sort of Yeah, it's it's that sort of thing where I'm like, well where do you draw the line? <laughs> If you want to say, say like, no, you can't ship that. Yeah. If I can't ship, like some, you might say like, oh, two, it has to be two consenting adults, but that's not very consenting in that case, because yeah. Hannibal like manipulates and gaslights the hell out of Will. Right. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's like the same deal. It's like. Obviously, you know, the actual act of, like, rape and stuff is reprehensible. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I don't know, non-con is like a big old kink. Mm -hmm. Or, like, and, like, I think a lot of people who, like, have this ship aren't going to go out in the world and necessarily do heinous things. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think there's ever been like any real studies on that. Like have, you know, Hannibal Will shippers ever eaten anyone? <laughs> it's an academic paper. <laughs> How many people who, you know, I wonder if though if anybody who's ever watched Hannibal or Signs of the Lambs or anything like that has ever like, like eaten just a little bit of a person. <laughs> Just a little bit. How do I tell what square I'm in? I mean, you don't need your pinky finger. Um, I don't know, it can't, is there a way to bring up a map? Well, I don't know, it doesn't look like it. That's right. Greta, that's hella nasty. You mean like when you bite them? Or do you like when you're chewing them and then you actually swallow them? It's also gross. I've never bitten my nails. That was never uh, became a habit or anything for me. But I know it's pretty common. Hello, gaming romance. Hi, gaming romance. Um, so, do we want to switch topics, or...? Uh, I mean, like, where I was gonna go off of that is, like, you know, we've talked a lot about how, uh, 
I don't know. I think we kind of are on the same page in terms of these condemned ships, these yeah. cursed ships. Um, but I wanted to see if we could roll that into like... Now I know y'all don't get into ship wars because you're not that kind of person. Mm -hmm. But are there any ships out there that you... While you don't necessarily argue on the internet with, that do really rub you the wrong way? Uh... Yeah, I mean, there are some no TPs that I have. Well, hit me up with um, them. Tell everybody's dying to know. What are your no TPs, Chelsea? I mean, you know, any, pretty much anything that's a popular incest ship, I okay. find gross. Okay, okay, okay. Hit, like, tell, well, tell me some. Elrecest, <laughs> which is Yo, an L. How would that even work? One of them's a robot. <laughs> I mean, that robot, as far as I know, that robot don't got no dick. Well, it doesn't, you know, you can ship without sex. WRONG! <laughs> no! Yeah, no, I know. But, like, it don't got lips, you can't kiss them. <laughs> what, what do they even do? Talk about their feelings. That's not romantic! <laughs> <laughs> Is Sword Out Online incesty? I never, I didn't get very far in it. I wasn't super into it. Um, I remember our friend RD tried to get me to watch No Game No Life, which sort mm. of had vibes. Incest vibes? Yeah. So I was like, no, no thanks. There's that supernatural ship that you hate. Oh yeah, that is also incest. Yeah. Which is the, the two main characters of Supernatural are brothers. Right. Just like Adam Al. Right, right, and right. And it's a very popular ship to ship them together, and I'm like, mm -hmm. nah. <laughs> uh, no, this is not who I need to talk to either. Go away. Are there any, um... Are there any other famous brother ships? Or, like... I feel like brother ships and sister ships are, like, probably the most common incest ships. Like... Yeah. No, Nobody's... I mean, maybe somebody's, but like most people aren't like doing fucking Oedipus ships over here, right? Nobody's like Hill, yeah, Ash and Ash's mom. <laughs> Fuck yes. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know who can't. I don't know who that is. Who's Kirito? Oh, I think that's the main character. Right. Of what? Sword Art Online. Hi, hi, Dunky. Hey, Dunky. We're talking about ships. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going. I guess a, a ship that exists that's probably nasty would be like Sans and Papyrus. They're mm. brothers. Yeah, that's true. And again, it's much sim very similar to Al and Ed. It's like, I don't know, it's the they, they're skeletons, dude. <laughs> what, what do you even do? Talk about their feelings? No. Um, I wonder if there's any people who ship like Maya and Mia. Hmm. I don't know. I haven't seen that. Yeah, I, I, I've never it, heard it of this. It probably exists. It, well, like every ship yeah. exists. But like some ships are just really unpopular. Like yeah. nobody's like, no, why? and I wonder why that is. <laughs> I wonder why Maya and Mia isn't a popular ship. Cause like you think that people would do it, right? Mm. I mean like Mia is like obviously like portrayed to be like just extremely sexy. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, very purposefully. Shu Takumi made her a, made her titties a very important part of the video game. Yeah. Um. I mean, like, Maya's not, like, meant to be sexy at all, really, but, you know, people, like, still get horny for Maya. Mm -hmm. Because people will get horny for anything, really. I'm horny for Betty, right now. Oh, my. A little uncomfortable tidbit I want to share with all of you. Um, New OTP, yeah, Clark and Betty. Yeah, me and that chicken. What mm. will Marina say? Don't you dare tell Marina. <laughs> Marina doesn't have to know about this, okay? <laughs> my fish wife doesn't know how, need to know about my bird wife. Your, your bird wife. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm surprised that's not um, more of a oh, thing. I bet um, in Kill a Kill, yeah. the main character and like the main antagonist, spoiler alert, 
turn out to be half sisters. Oh really? Yeah, but it's not revealed oh, yeah. until later. So I guess it's slightly more forgivable if you like shipped them from the get go and then later it was revealed that they're siblings and you're like, oh. But you don't yeah. want to give up your ship. Never gonna give it up. Um what oh what about a uh, uh fuck, what's that fucker's name? Who? In what? In in Ace Attorney. The the fucking Clavier's brother. Oh, Kristoff? Yeah, Clavier and Kristoff's got to be one that happens, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I've seen that one. Well, how do you, do you hate that one yeah. too, right? Yep. Are there any are there any incest ships you'll give a pass to? Are there any I mean, of I them? I guess I don't think there are any that I myself ship, but I guess like the Kill a Kill one, I feel like it's not quite as gross if mm -hmm. maybe they didn't know they were siblings. Right. And they fell in love. Then it's, and they didn't like grow up together as siblings. Mm -hmm. That's slightly, that's a little better, I guess. Here's, here's my question. What if it's a cannon ship though? Like? Like Jamie Cersei. Oh yeah. I mean, it's still, I still think it's kind of gross. Yeah. But Chelsea, they love each other. <laughs> like there's um, there's this Yuri manga called... Uh, Yuri on Ice. Yeah. No, it's called Citrus. Oh, okay. And I have mixed feelings about it because on one hand it's fairly decent because a lot of Yuri manga is just like... kind of blatant just... exploitation or not very good story or what what have you um and it actually has like some cute characters and a decent story i have a quick question but when you say blatant exploitation do you mean like it's basically yuri manga for like dudes to get horny about uh yeah basically and like okay. not not all of course well sure but a lot of it is a lot of a lot of it's just basically like very much you know transparently smut. Yeah. It can be difficult to find some that's actual like romance. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times when it is, it's a bad romance. Yeah. Um, and Citrus is like I said, it actually has story and some nice characters and such. Mm -hmm. But. The two main characters, like, it's, they're, they're stepsisters. Okay, this poses an interesting question. Yeah, and it's like, the main character sort of starts having feelings with her before they become stepsisters. Mm -hmm. That's gotta be an, an, a bad situation to find yourself in. Yeah, so it's like, I can this, empathize. is this kind of weird? Like... Imagine, imagine that you're married to someone and then you're, both your divorcee parents get married and now, oh shit, oh we're step-siblings. Where am I supposed to go? Oh, okay. And like, I think part of the reason it still feels a little squicky to me is that I also sort of get the feeling that the mangaka made them stepsisters just because as a sort of a bit of a fetishy thing. Oh, you think it is Because it doesn't like a... really contribute to the plot. Yeah. Like it does a little bit. It adds to the drama, I guess. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, if they were just classmates, it wouldn't make much difference. Right. Right, 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 right. So I have mixed feelings about that series. Okay. Where's the furniture screen? It's right there. Right in front of you. You just, you were just on it. This is the furniture screen? Yeah. Where's the furniture? It's that leaf. Oh. 
Or Vladimir. You know what? Go find Vladimir and give him that leaf. Oh, here he is. Oops. So I'm up here, so I need to go down three and left one. I guess I'll go around. What other no TPs do you have, Chelsea? Um, I mean, there are some that are just like personal preference. Well, that's what I'm interested in. Tell me about your personal preferences. Um, so in the anime free, mm -hmm. there are like the two most popular ships are often having a ship war. Okay. And it's like the main character, Haru, mm -hmm. with either Rin or Makoto. Are those like the two guys he's always hanging out with? Yeah, like, Makoto is like his childhood friend who's really nice. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's like, I guess, the, the trope of the kind childhood friend who would do anything for him or whatever. Right. And then Rin is like his, uh, I get the anime trope of like the destined rival who is also a close friend. Uh, and like, I like Rin Haru, mm -hmm. but Maku Haru is, is, like I don't hate it, but I'm just like not into it at all. Oh yeah, I imagine shipping has been a thing since since fiction. characters <laughs> yeah have been a thing. I'm like, yo, who's your who? Are, yo, name your top epic of Gilgamesh ships. <laughs> How do I? Uh... You gotta find him. Oh, I have to. You have to find the man himself. Okay. There he is. Hey. Well, why are you? Oh, you're his slave. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, I don't like Phoenix Apollo because I see that as like more of a father-son relationship. Mm -hmm. So I think shipping them romantically is kind of squicky. And it's not that's not a super popular ship, but it's I guess common enough. TPs for uh, like Avatar. Um, not really. Besides, like again, like incesty stuff. Yeah. But so you're not you're not a Sotara. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not only is that terrible from the incest standpoint, but it makes no sense narratively. Yeah. But yeah, Trucy Apollo. I wonder. I, there are probably people. Oh, I don't but understand. That's a dumb one. It's, yeah. Like, I definitely, like, even before finding out they were siblings, did not read any sort of romantic hints. 
Like, I could see an argument for Phoenix and Maya. Uh huh. But not for Trucy and Apollo. I always forget that they're related, honestly. Oh, yeah. Honestly, that twist at the end, like, didn't affect me. Mm hmm. So I forget pretty often that they're a fucking thing. But even yeah, from the standpoint it of them... Help, it doesn't help that the devs then never talk about it again. Right. <laughs> but even from the standpoint of them not being related, I think it's a bad ship. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, the best ship for Trucy is that Wesley guy. Right? What? The best ship for Trucy is the Wesley guy from the second case. <laughs> the panty thief? The uh, He's a panty scholar, please. <laughs> Don't uh, deride his credentials. <laughs> Don't worry, Sans. We would never abandon you. I would, in a heartbeat. Like in one second. Who's Mr. Hat? Trucy's weird puppet. Oh god, yeah, I forgot. Ugh. <laughs> what about what about Trucy Clavier? Uh, I don't. Mm, it's a little <laughs> weird. I think maybe that one is more because of the age gap. I find that a little squeaky. How old is Trucy supposed to be in the first game? She's like 15, right? Yeah. And was Clavier like 21? I think Clavier's 24. Mm, okay. That's nine years. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little squicky. Yeah. Wait, I have to actually make the letter. How do I make the letter? Oh, you're dealing with Phyllis. She sucks. She's a piece of shit. How do I write a letter? Eat my butt, Phyllis. Uh, select the letter. And write letter. Who was that for? Boots. Now write Boots a beautiful letter. Tell Boots you wanna fuck. <laughs> Dear Boots, let's bang. Do you have picks? Hands, I feel like you abandoned us, not the other way around. Oh, that's a, oh. well, well, that's kind of hmm. Well, <laughs> see, Dewey saw a ship of Steven Universe and Lapis Lazuli. How did he feel about that? How did you feel about that, C. Dewey? How did you feel about Steven Lapis? I'm not into it because I ship Lapis with Peridot every day, all day. Forever. Yeah, that's a cute ship. It's the cutest ship, Chelsea. It's so fucking cute. I do think it's weird when Steven fuses, though. It's like, whenever he fuses, it's always something that I have to, like, explain away in my brain. Oh, yeah. Because, like, fusing is, like, so obviously, like, supposed to be romantic. I mean, I was also thinking about that, and, like, I always sort of interpreted it as fusing is just sort of the physical embodiment of any relationship, not necessarily romantic, 
it can be it can be romantic like with Garnet, but it can also be platonic with like Steven and Amethyst. And then it can also be like toxic like with Lapis and Jasper. So I always kind of thought of it as not always romantic. See, I always had to like, I, it's like I have to like say that to myself that it's not romantic, but then in my brain I'm like, is it though not? Because like the subtext of like so much of it is like romance. It's like all the main fusions are like, you know, this big deal is made of like about pearl and rose quartz and that's like mm -hmm. obviously, yeah. obviously romantic. Right, and but like the first fusion, which is Amethyst and Pearl, that we see, well, is besides Garnet. definitely romantic, dude. <laughs> That's defo romantic. It's that, it's that like, ex who mm -hmm. you like, can't stand, but, but goddamn, mm. that, that like, fucking dick is on point. Yeah, I don't, I like obviously can't speak for other people, but I feel like Steven Lapis would be probably another example of a person putting themselves in the shoes of one of them and liking the other character, but I don't know. What if like Stevani then fused with a gem? Hmm. That'd be weird. <laughs> But I mean, for the most part, I think that, you know, the intent of the creators is kind of like you said, it symbolizes multitudes of different human relationships. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that like it, it's like originally like so much of the subtext, at least to me, as far as I interpreted it to mm -hmm. be. Oh yeah. I mean like, like definitely, romantic. definitely a lot of them do seem romantic. So like, I remember like watching when Pearl and Garnet first fused, Pearl freaking straight up gives her bedroom eyes when she's dancing. And I was like, dang. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I had to backpedal in my brain to make the Steven Amethyst fusion okay. Cause like when it happened, I was like, oh, she's like his sister, dude. Yeah. So Tom Nook just said, like, come back later. Yeah, you're done. So you're done with work. You can do whatever the fuck you want just now. Just do whatever. Yeah. Cool. Do you have any money? No, you got fucking dick nope. all money. Got a picnic table. Well, <laughs> cool. I don't know. You can talk to, like, the fucking animals, and they'll give you little odd jobs to do. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. You should try and get, like, enough money to get a shovel somehow. Yeah. You can also, like... I don't know, sell furniture to Tom Nook and shit like that. Mm. Okay. You're too poor for clothes. Ha 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 Poor. Thanks. Uh, oh, what's her name? Mabel. Uh, no, what you were doing. It remind me of in a Gretzko, her, fr <laughs> her friend. Fenico? Fenico, that was it. Oh yeah. The way she laughs. <laughs> well then what good oh, are you? Damn it, Olivia. Damn, Olivia has like beachfront property. What the fuck is this, Nook? I got a shed in like, in the middle of nowhere, Olivia gets a beachfront property. I see what this is. I don't have money, but I have oranges. Yeah, dude, you're rich in citrus, but not the Yuri manga. Yeah. Do you have any no TPs? I know you're not really into shipping anyway. I mean, but are like, there any I need that like make I, you like. Ugh. I don't like get into shipping communities. I definitely have, you know, caught myself like subconsciously like shipping people mm -hmm. when I watch media, you know. Um, but like, 
I, I don't have any, like, aside from, like, you know, incest and big age gaps mm -hmm. and stuff like that, I don't have any, like, real, like, ships that are, like, no grows. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the first ships that I really disliked, because, uh, like, when, when, like, Undertale came out, I did try and participate in the fan community for that. Big mistake. Don't ever do that. Um, is that I really hated Sans Toriel because mm. I didn't buy it. Yeah. I guess that's the thing. It's like, I personally have to buy the ship. Yeah. Like, I don't get... Well, I mean, that's kind of the whole thing with shipping. Yeah. <laughs> that's why people get up in arms about different ships. Because they're like, why would you ship that? This one is so much better. Right. And it's just all personal opinion. Yeah. Well, I don't have to think a ship is better to hate a ship. Mm -hmm. I, I hate plenty of ships. Let me listen. As as expected, most I dislike most ships. Because mm -hmm. I feel like they're just, I don't know, people are just like, we should put them together because of I uh, want to. But I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not trying to ruin anybody's good time. If you like a ship, even if it's dumb and bad, then you should enjoy it. Enjoy your dumb and bad ships. Um, that being said, it's like, I'm trying to run through my brain, like, you know, what are, what are the fandoms where I care about, like, the ships? Mm -hmm. I mean, I like Steven Universe for, like, shipping, and I do, like, feel very strongly about, like, Peridot Lazuli, but outside of that, I don't have any, like, strong shipping preferences, mm -hmm. so to speak. It's like... I don't know, it's like, who are you gonna ship Pearl with, even? No one? I mean, Pink Diamonds, uh, or rather, uh, Rose Quartz is, like, not around, so... Who the fuck do you ship Pearl with? Who would you ship Pearl with, Chelsea? Um... I mean, I do really have a lot of feels about her relationship with Pink Diamond slash Rose. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like characters who are around now, I don't really have a ship for her, I don't think. Thanks for the host, Sans. Thanks, Sans. Yeah, there's Mystery Girl, but she's oh, yeah, only was, she was only in one episode. Right. And then never came <laughs> back. If Mystery Girl comes back and interacts with Pearl, then I might be more into that. But as it is, it's just like, eh. Eh. Um, I had, I, I had a little bit like of an inkling of maybe shipping Pearl and Garnet earlier on because they did have a bit of a relationship together, but I think that sort of has, uh, petered out for me. I don't really have a whole lot of Steven Universe ships. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm kind. I kind of like. I just don't do that much like active shipping. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's it's very passive. I don't. I can tell you like cannon ships that I think are stupid. <laughs> here's here's one that I hate. Here's a cannon ship that I think fucking sucks, but. Harry and Ginny. Mm, yeah. Dumb. Same. Why? Who cares? I it feel. Really, I literally feel yeah. like J.K. Rowling was like, "What well, girls are left? Uh, Ginny. Okay." To me, it always felt like she had wanted them to be together. Like she had the idea of putting them together early on, but then sort of forgot about it. And then at the end, was like, "Oh yeah, I was going to do that. Uh, they're together now." Yeah. Like, instead of, you know, letting the characters... It felt like instead of letting the characters grow along the paths that they take, because, you know, over time, over the writing process, characters do grow beyond what you initially think. And for the most part, I felt like uh, that sort of... Di she did let them go in dire different directions than maybe she initially planned. But with Harry and Ginny, it felt like it was something she thought of before and then just sort of shoehorned in just because. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't like it. I thought it was bad. I thought it sucked and I was only like 16 and that's how you know it must be bad. Uh, 
You gotta right. get rid of you gotta get rid of these oranges, Chelsea. But they're good for you. You prevent scurvy. Yeah. I don't want to get. I don't, do you want Oprah to get scurvy, Clark? Yes. Um. Uh, Sans likes pearl amethyst. Hmm. Nah. Yeah, I don't really see it personally, but it doesn't like make me feel like ugh. It's not like gross, yeah. but it's like I also don't see it. Yeah. I like uh I like lapis and peridot. I also like peridot it's and amethyst. I think it's cute. You shut your fucking <laughs> mouth right now. There's no ship outside of Lapis Parado. I swear. <laughs> Ooh, Chelsea, you can't be you can't be espousing such heresy on this channel. No, Clark. It's so cute, Chelsea. 2018. 2018. You you like potentially problematic ships? Uh, ah, whatever. You can ship whatever you want. You <laughs> like you like Paradot with someone that's not. Lapis, death, blocked. Unfired. I will. I will only put up with so much. <laughs> you can't tell me that that's not like the cutest ship. It's so cute. I love it so much. It is cute. I just also like the other one. No, no. Why can't? What about an OT three? No, no. <laughs> Who was I taking this to? I don't remember. Kitty cat. I was so <laughs> blinded with white hot rage. <laughs> Pinky. I shit Pinky in the brain. <laughs> Um, the most discourse I've been seeing recently has been for Voltron, because that's like the fandom I'm really into right now, Voltron. unfortunately. <sighs> that fandom. Welcome to the robot kitty cats of the future. It's Voltron, baby. They fight space aliens, and then I assume the ki giant robot kitty cats play with robot yarn balls later. Yes. Yeah, there's been like sort of a big ship war lately for the two most popular ships for that. Red which kitty is cat and black kitty cat versus red kitty cat and blue kitty cat. Yep. What is the two what's the two most popular ships, Chelsea? Uh it is what you said, but uh the the humans. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's Keith who is the red paladin with Lance who's the blue paladin, or Keith with Shiro, who's a black paladin. Although now, like, they switched robots, so it's a little more iffy now. Like, now Lance is the red paladin and Keith is the black paladin. Mm -hmm. um, and then Shiro was like, I don't know, I don't want to spoil it if anyone's interested in it, but there was this whole thing where he was missing, but now he's back, so it's sort of like, well, now who's the black paladin and <laughs> are they going to switch back? What's going on with that? But anyway, a lot of the discourse has been like, it's weird because it's been sort of a combination of sh traditional ship war, like Zutara versus Zukang. Uh, I mean, Zukang. <laughs> well, Zukang. hold up. That's, Let's. That's hold another one. It was uh, <laughs> Zutara versus Angtara. Um, Zukang is probably in there somewhere too. Uh, First of all, wait, wait, wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we go on with this, can I ask yeah. you: Is there Sokka Ang uh, um, shipping? Probably. What's I haven't the, really seen any. What's the ship name? I don't know. I'll tell you what the what? fucking ship name is, baby. What is it? Boomerang. It's good. It's officially the best ship now. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Continue. Um, 
But yeah, it's sort of like this weird combination of a traditional ship war like that, and also sort of the the problematic discourse that we were talking about earlier. Bob is the best cat, Amanda. I'm glad you agree. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Because, <laughs> like, a lot of... Um, like, a lot of people, the reason they don't like Shiro and Keith is that the show does sort of show them as more... older brother-younger brother relationship. Yeah. And it's like, you you could interpret it that way, and you could also, but you could, there's like also stuff in it that you could interpret it as romantic. And like, pers personally, I like Clance, I don't like Sheath. But I'm not gonna like, tell people they can't ship <laughs> Shiro and Keith. But, it it's... A, it's an argument that has been going on for forever, it feels like, and it's very annoying. Yeah. Caught in the crossfire of the ship wars, Chelsea. Yeah. Like, I... when I Before I started Voltron, one of the people I followed on Tumblr does sh ship Shiro and Keith. And I saw, like, fan art of them, and I thought it was cute, so that's kind of what made me want to start watching it. So you'd think I would ship them, but then when I actually watched it, I preferred Lance and Keith. And then I, I also interpreted Shiro and Keith's relationship more as, as brotherly. Gotcha. So, I guess it's... I wouldn't say it's like a no TP for me, but I don't like it. <laughs> it doesn't gross me out, but I, I don't like it. <laughs> I gotcha. Guess. But I'm again, I'm not going to be like, hey, the ship is gross. Uh, I don't know. And then it's sort of been like added fuel to the flames recently with some of the more the more recent stuff in like the show, and then also they revealed some stuff at Comic Con recently. And it's like, cause like in the last season, minor spoilers, Keith does call Shiro like you're like he says I love you, you're my brother. So people were all like, ah, oh, see they're brothers, and and then it's like just added fuel to the flames, I guess. And then at Comic-Con it was revealed that Shiro is gay, which is great. Um, and that his, he had a, a boyfriend who we haven't met yet, but is supposed to show up in the new season that comes out soon. Um, and then now people are all, it, it's, so, it's so dumb. Like some people are like, oh, see, he already has a boyfriend. And then other people are like, no, they broke up before the series, which they, they did tell us that. And it's like, it, it's because, this is just a reveal to show that that was his ex, but Shiro's gay, so he's going to get together with Keith now. And it's like, please stop. Chelsea, you got to get rid of some of these oranges. I did. Look at all of them. you got to get rid of more of the oranges. I Tom Nook was trying to give you something. Wait, what do you, what do you all got? Oh, you picked That's up all these seashells. <laughs> What else am I supposed to do at the beach, Clark? <laughs> I'm not that! Not fill up your dang inventory! That's all I do when I go to the beach! MCU? What the fuck um, is MCU? Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh. Uh, but to answer your question, C. Dewey, I don't think anyone has been confirmed as LGBT in Voltron except for Shiro at this point. Is Pidge Although, not LGBT? No. no. At least it hasn't... People interpret... Like, there, people have interpreted her as being trans, maybe, mm -hmm. but it has not been confirmed. Um, and it, it has... Honestly, it hasn't really even been hinted at in the show. It's just that she disguised herself as a boy, and some people ran with that, which I, I think that's headcanon is great, but um, it's not, like, canon or anything mm. for all intents and purposes. Um... But yeah, people are really hopeful that Lance will be revealed to be bisexual. That's another thing, like with the Shiro reveal, a lot of people are arguing now that like, oh, that means Lance won't become, won't be revealed as bisexual because they already have their token gay character. And it's like, 
on one hand, I want to believe that, you know, there's not a cap on that. There's no quota. You can have more than one LGBT character, and I hope that that will be the case. But on the other hand, the writing for Voltron can fluctuate significantly between being good and being bad. So I don't know if I trust the writers to give us more than one LGBT character, which is the unfortunate uh, situation. I only I ever I'm... watched the first episode too, Amanda. Don't feel bad. Yeah. Like, okay, so the thing with Voltron, and this is sort of slightly on an off topic, but related. Voltron has this thing where it's... Can I Very... sell your stuff for you while I explain this? Yeah, here. It is very inconsistent in that sometimes it's great and they like set up all these cool plot things and potential character development that gets you excited and like relationships and like interesting stuff that looks like it's gonna be great. And then they'll turn around and like drop it. And it's very frustrating. And it has it has the pattern of doing that. And it's just it's like I want it has so much potential. I want to love this show because you were showing me how good it can be, but then it rarely follows through. So I guess that's why like I keep watching it because in the hopes that it will follow through on what seems to be like an amazing show but I'm I've also been burned before so my who hurt my you hopes, Chelsea Voltron uh, wait Voltron hurt you oh you were burned specifically by Voltron yes yeah and also like the characters are great like but again the writers tend to sort of take their potential, uh, like the character's potential, and forget about it. And it's very frustrating. Like, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but they did sort of set up that Lance, one of the main characters, was going to get this whole sort of character arc. And there were hints at it coming in, the, in one of the seasons, and everyone was really excited. And then in the next season, it gets resolved without Lance really doing anything to help. And it was like, what was all that set up for? So I have mixed feelings for Voltron. I do enjoy it. It's a, it's a fun show, but it has a lot of big flaws. I was actually joking with Clark because we're trying to do this thing on YouTube a series where we like debate whether a thing is good or bad. Mm -hmm. Like right now we're working on a Skyward Sword video. Right. And I was saying like, well, if I do one for Voltron, instead of me and Clark arguing, it'll just be me versus myself <laughs> on the other side. Classic. <laughs> and um, it'll be like me with a color palette swap and a fake mustache or something. I don't, I don't get what you're saying. See birds on the top of your head. What? Yeah, I don't. I don't like know. when Mario falls asleep. Does Mario get birds on top of his head when he falls asleep? In Odyssey, if you like stay idle for a while, Mario eventually takes a nap, uh -huh. and then a little bird will come down and perch on you. Oh, okay. It's pretty funny and cute, and kind of weird when you're on the moon. Where did that bird come from? Chelsea loves Voltron, man. I do. I love it, but I also hate it. Part Chelsea. of me is glad that it will be over this year. <laughs> I feel like I will be I'll be free. You're in a bad relationship. <laughs> yeah. Please. Ugh, for fuck's sakes. I mean, it's just like I said, it's got some amazing stuff in it, but it also has some terrible stuff in it. And it's like if it was if it was just consistent, like if it was just consistently good, that'd be one thing. But it's like, it'll have a, like, season three was great. Season four was terrible. 
Season 5 was okay again. Season 6 was mostly okay, but had some bad stuff in it. Like some smaller bad stuff. Mainly the Lance thing I was just talking about. And I just don't know if it'll continue on this pattern, but there are only two more seasons, so we'll see, I guess. Oh, I see. You've got little cartoon birds flying around your head because you're confused. Oh, I gotcha. Hey, you know what? Well, we can switch topics. Show I'm, I wish would I'm be basically over. done ranting about this now. I might, I might pick it up again in another episode, but... You know what show I wish would have a satisfying conclusion already? What? Steven Universe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, I, I can't handle all these fucking droughts. I just want yeah. it to be over. Just, you know when you just want to die? <laughs> this feels like that. It's like, just, listen, just conclude it so I don't have to fucking go through these long spells of no Steven oh, Universe. There you go, see Dewey. We're talking about Steven Universe now. I mean, I do hate the droughts, but I don't want it to end too soon because I want to. I feel like there's a lot still to unpack. But I do wish they would go back to like regular scheduled programming instead of just a Steven bomb now and then. They're making a movie now. Yeah, I know. And then it's over, right? I don't know if the movie's going to like be how they end it. But, like, I feel like it's probably gonna conclude relatively soon, because, like, spoilers. Now he's met the uh, blue and yellow, and he's gonna. We just found out at Comic Con he's about to meet White, which was, like, the last sort of big mystery was what's White's deal. Um, so, like, I don't know. Unless they, like, uncover another huge mystery. It feels like it was probably going to wrap up relatively soon. I'm good with that. It wouldn't surprise me if the movie that com that they they're doing might be how they end it, but that would also be kind of weird. Yeah, exactly, see Dewey. They've fin they've pretty much tied up most of the mysteries and the character arcs. So, I feel like once Again, once they uh, meet White Diamond and figure out what her deal is and everything, I don't know what else they could really do. Oh, really, Amanda? I knew that they ruined Teen Titans and Powerpuff Girls, but I didn't know that they were also redoing Courage and Ed, Ed and Eddie. Oh, they're redoing Courage and Ed, Ed and Eddie? Apparently. Oh, man. That's too bad. Maybe this time will be different. Unlikely, but you never know. I'm sorry I was bad at Animal Crossing. I just got really invested in the conversation, and that combined with the fact that I didn't actually know how to play Animal Crossing. Yeah. It was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> what? I hate this keyboard. <laughs> Why is it like this? Okay, there we go. Now it's QWERTY. Oh. Yeah, maybe, C. Dewey. I mean, like I said, I feel like the story's not completely finished, because again, White Diamond. But, I don't know. What do you guys feel about the theory that our Pearl and White Pearl were switched? Do you guys hear about that theory? That's a theory now? Yeah. What? I didn't spoil Voltron Season 6 for you. I didn't say anything about the plot, unless you're talking about a different episode. Wasn't Courage's head already big? Yeah, it was a pretty big one. Is it even bigger now? I love Courage so much. That was like my favorite cartoon as a kid. They're rebooting She-Ra too. Oh yeah, I remember everyone on Twitter was upset because of dumb reasons. Yeah. She's not hot enough. Yeah. She was not sexy. She don't want to fuck the cartoon character anymore. Yeah. I mean, it looks like they also made her younger, so... It makes sense <laughs> that they would make her less sexy. Uh, man, sexy cartoon. Finally. 
Oh yeah, Lars and Sadie need to have their character arcs tied up. Courage's head is big and round. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> big round head. Just like my husbando Tom Nook. <laughs> Yeah, um, at Comic Con, we got a reveal of what White Diamond, like there was a little clip with White Diamond, and it also showed White Pearl. And based on like their character designs compared with the other Diamond Pearls, people are theorizing that uh, our Pearl, which should be Pink Pearl, was actually White Pearl originally, but then was given to Pink Pearl. Diamond for some reason, and swapped with Pink Diamond and Pink Diamond. I mean, Pink Pearl and Pink Pearl became White Pearl. Oh yeah, for sure, see Dewey. Ah, people are dumb. It's very true. Uh, one thing I'm excited for, though, is the Dragon Prince. Have you guys heard about that? It's coming out in August. It's by the writer and director, I think, of Avatar The Last Airbender. Ooh. And they already, they, there's like a trailer that they revealed at Comic-Con, and they also talked that there will be LGBT representation in it, which is nice. Um, I'm not 100% sold on the animation. It's sort of a weird combination of 2D and 3D, but... It, we'll see how it looks when it actually comes out. Press X or Y to sell more than one, says Amanda. Oh, okay. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, it looks kind of like Ruby. Which, honestly, part of the reason I couldn't get into Ruby was the art style. <laughs> it was kind of weird. But I'm ho again, I'm hoping maybe if the if the characters and story is good enough, then I'll be able to get past that. Shut up, Tom. You have so much money now. I'm busy. Give me this shovel. That's a shovel. Yes, I know. I'll take it. Yeah, there's some anime that do that too. Um, what was it? It was like the new Berserk? There was like some anime that they redid recently and it had sort of that also animation. Forty-five minutes. Gotcha. So probably wrap things up relatively fairly, soon. Fairly soon. Plenty on these segments only being about two hours. Yeah. So in, so savor them. Yeah. Savor these moments with your with your favorite streamers talking about the bad touches that fandoms do. Uh, yeah, but it feels like there are a lot of remakes going on now. I'm just for the remaking Courage, the Cowardly Dog Dude. Yeah. Whoops. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how to do this good. Um. Oh, well, someone just buried a thousand dollars in the ground. See, this shovel was a good investment. Yeah. Pays for itself. Um. But yeah, like we said, this is sort of our newish. Like in a way, this segment is a remake of Mario Kart Monday. <laughs> oh no, we're <laughs> hacks, Chelsea. Uh, I don't know if we want to do this sort of thing weekly or bi-weekly. I feel like weekly might be pushing it. Yeah, let's do it bi-weekly. So probably every other week we'll be doing different games and be talking about random stuff like this. So if you guys have Stuff you want to talk about, 
topics and or games. We're always Let us know. excited to hear from our viewers. We can't promise that we'll take your suggestions, but we will consider them. Mm -hmm. Give me money. No, I don't want stationery. God, what? thanks for the stationery. Here, you know what I think of your stationery? Yeah, they remade Ben 10 as well. And like- There. That wasn't very good. I mean, to be fair, I only watched a couple episodes of the new one, but I didn't think it was nearly as good as the old one. Which is too bad. Yeah. I never watched Benton. Mm. Um, I think at that point I wasn't watching. Yeah. Like, very much, uh, cartoons. I don't remember, like, when, it, when about it came out. I feel like it came out in, like, 2004 or something. Maybe 2005. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. I think, like, the last, like, cartoon I watched before I was, like... Uh, I'm gonna watch skateboard videos, not cartoons. <laughs> uh, it was like Teen Titans, the original one. Mm. I don't know if Star vs. the Forces of Evil has a regular airing schedule. Yeah. yeah, the fandoms for those do have a lot of overlap. I've also found that is the case. Yeah, Bent Benton. Yeah. Benton. Benton. Beautiful. Well, at least it's better than the <laughs> fucking rocks. Lovely. You can sleep on that. Blocking the exit. Now I can't leave. <laughs> Help, I'm trapped! But also, now no one can come bother you. I just have a picnic. But yeah, um, if you guys have any suggestions, like obviously we love for you guys to be in the chat and talking to us and giving us your opinions on this stuff. And uh, even if it's things we're not as familiar with, we probably, if, as long as we're like vaguely familiar, we can probably have a discussion. Yep. And obviously anything related to like video games and anime and cartoons, there's a good chance we know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I I know about anime. I've I've read of anime. Um, personally, no. I've never really felt like, oh, this is only for kids. I can't watch this. Um. Hey. The, like the only times I ever feel a little self-conscious or is is if I'm like I visited my parents for Fourth of July this year, and it was when the new Steven bomb was coming out, so I was like watching that, and my mom she wasn't like making fun of me or anything, but she's like Chelsea still loves her cartoons. <laughs> I was like, uh, yep. Shut up, mom. <laughs> mom. Uh. Like I think I would if I liked something that was aimed at like really little kids, I'd probably feel more self-conscious, but I, I think most of the shows like Steven Universe are like, they are for kids, but they're they, like- They have they, appeal for yeah, adults. Yeah, they have appeal for adults. Um, like obviously they're made by adults who want to put stuff in it that they enjoy and can, can share with friends and everything. So yeah, you know, it's, it's, I, it's got enough in it that it's not like only small children would be able to enjoy this. I felt self-conscious about it a long time ago, like when I was a cool teen mm -hmm. and, and like a little bit when I was like kind of a young adult. But it's like, man, life is short. Yeah. Just fucking enjoy, just enjoy things you enjoy and don't trip about it. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, we might talk about music if you have music you want to talk about. Yeah, Clark is a um, musician. I'm what they call a professional musician. 
Um, Wink. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I'll admit, I did sort of have a little bit of that self-consciousness with anime. Well, but... anime is trash, Chelsea, and you <laughs> yeah. should feel ashamed. Oh. <laughs> um, that sort of happened like towards the end of high school, beginning of college, but then I got into anime again because I found new anime that I liked. So I was like, eh, whatever. I like it. Yeah. And like, obviously, I only watch the finest of anime, so. <laughs> only the <laughs> fine aged yes. anime. I listen to a lot of different music, man. I listen to, I don't know, there's not like a lot of music I don't listen to, but if I'm gonna like talk about specific music I've been listening to recently, I've been listening to a lot of like Beach House and Home Shake and um, uh, shit, what the fuck is that band called? Washed yeah, Out. Yeah, we're probably gonna go soon, Sans. Yeah, we're, we're about to peace out. Um, but yeah, Amanda, if you are interested in listening to us talk more, give us a follow. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, you can suggest stuff to us if you like. You can go onto our Discord, which we're sending you a link to now. Give us suggestions, chat with us. Um, and obviously that goes for anyone else watching as well. Uh, this is going to be sort of a bi-weekly segment where, just like this, we'll, we'll play a game. Sometimes it might be Animal Crossing again. We're also thinking about doing Smash Bros. We or, have a list of 11 games. Yeah, we have a bunch of games where you don't super... Ha we can like just talk and don't have to super pay attention to the game. Yep. Um, and we want to just discuss random stuff that you guys want to talk about. Send us your suggestions, viewers, and we'll be happy to talk. We'll talk turkey with you. Oh, well, thank you for the follow, Amanda. Wink. Thank you, Amanda. Um, and, yeah, see, so Dewey, uh, about your question earlier, I do think that's an interesting topic, and maybe we can discuss it next time. I feel like we don't really have enough time to get into that this episode, uh, but I do think it's an interesting question. So, yeah. So uh, remind us later, and we'll discuss it. Well, Sans, if you want to do that, you can. Do it, Sans, you coward. Um, but yeah, I guess that's about it for this episode. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye.